In this tutorial, I will explain what a dipole antenna is. The antennas built in this tutorial are intended for test and educational purpose and should be used indoors. The antennas are constructed in such a way so it can be easily disassembled and its parts can be reused in other antenna projects. The antennas are not properly constructed and the antenna performance can be improved by using better materials, parts, or another way of construction. A dipole antenna is the simplest and most widely used class of antenna. A dipole antenna consists of two identical conductive elements such as copper wires, rods, or tubes. As you can see over here, two identical conductive elements. The two elements contribute to the radiation. If the total length of the dipole is a half wavelength, then each element has a length of a quarter wavelength. So if the total length is a half wavelength, then each element is a quarter wavelength. When we speak of a half wave dipole antenna, the total length of the antenna is a half wavelength, as you can see here. The construction of a dipole antenna is as follows. This is the most simplistic explanation. One element of the dipole antenna is attached to the coax cable center conductor. As you can see over here, this is a center conductor and here is one element attached to it. The other element is attached to the coax cable metallic shield. As you can see over here, this is the metallic shield and the other antenna element is connected to this metallic shield. This is called a quarter wave dipole because the length is a quarter wavelength. This line indicates the maximum current. In this image you see that the current flows the same direction, but the current is not maximum. It is here and the maximum is here. This antenna, which is a quarter wavelength, has poor efficiency. And this is the radiation pattern of a quarter wave dipole. If the length is a half wavelength, this is called a half wave dipole. This is the maximum current level, and as you can see, the current reaches the maximum, and current flows the same direction. This is a good antenna. And again, here you can see the radiation pattern. The length is now one wavelength. This is called a one wave dipole. This is the maximum current level, and there are two peaks current flows the same direction, but the radiation pattern is flattened compared to the half-wave dipole, and the dipole is much larger. This antenna is not optimal. The length is now two wavelength. This is called a two-wave dipole. Current flows counteract each other. This antenna is not good. And here you can see the radiation pattern. And finally, this is a dipole antenna with a length of one and a half wavelength. This is called a one and a half wave dipole. Here, current flows interfere with each other. This antenna is not good. And here you can see the radiation pattern. A nice animation where you can see the radiation pattern versus current distribution when you increase the dipole length. See this YouTube video. This YouTube video. I will only show you a few seconds of this animation. I highly recommend that you watch this video. This video is made by Diego Gaston. This is the equation to calculate the wavelength. C is the speed of light. Lambda is the wavelength in meters. And F is the frequency in hertz. If the antenna frequency is 868 MHz, then the wavelength is calculated by dividing the speed of light by the frequency in Hertz equals 345.38 mm. As explained earlier, a half-wave dipole is a good antenna, so the length is a half-wavelength. This means both elements of the antenna are a quarter wavelength in length. If the frequency is 868 MHz and the wavelength is 345.38 mm, 
then this length is half times the wavelength. Half times the wavelength is 172.69 millimeters. Do not forget the velocity factor. If the dipole is made of stainless steel, which has a velocity factor of 0.9, this length will be 0.9 times this length equals 155 millimeters. A half wave dipole antenna has a power gain of 1.64 or 2.15 dBi over an isotropic antenna. I have explained this in tutorial 39. At its feed point, a half wave dipole antenna has an impedance consisting of 73 ohm resistance and a reactance of 42.5 ohms. Here's an example of a dipole antenna. When using this antenna, make sure it is vertically oriented. Most gateway antennas are vertical polarized. And here is an example of a sleeve dipole antenna. This antenna will be discussed in detail in tutorial 43. Here is one way to build a half-wave dipole antenna, but without a balen. In many practical situations, it is possible to operate a dipole satisfactorily without the use of a balen, but there may be a slight increased risk of interference if one is not used. I only use this dipole antenna for education slash test purpose. You need a Type N female chassis mount 4-hole connector. And here are its specifications. The two antenna wires are from an umbrella. These wires are made from stainless steel, called ribs. Instead of umbrella wires, you can use electrical wires, but I prefer stainless steel wires because it does not bend easily compared to copper wires. You can use this type of electrical wires. These copper wires have a diameter of 1.8 mm and only 1 meter is needed. The electrical insulator can be easily removed using a Stanley knife. The copper wire can be stretched out. The stretch out wire will be stiffer, more straight, but the wire diameter will decrease. What you also need is a terminal strip block. You need a terminal strip block for electrical wires with an area of 1.5 to 4 square millimeters. You only need one, and you also need these screws. Next, cut the two screws in half. This is the screw with original length. Why do you need to cut the screws in half? Well, because one antenna wire goes in here, the center conductor of the n-type flange goes in here, and when the screws are in, then these screws will not stick out too much. Here you see two terminals. This terminal hole is enlarged, as you can see over here. Why? Otherwise, the terminal will not fit the center conductor. Use a punch like this to enlarge the hole of a terminal, as you can see over here. Next, you need a bolt M4 by 10. The outer diameter is 4 mm, the length is 10 mm. You need a corresponding nut M4. And optionally, you can use a metal washer. By the way, if you use an M4 bolt, you need to enlarge the hole diameter from 3.5 mm to 4.5 mm, otherwise the bolt will not fit. Next, you need a coaxial cable. I'm using RG316 with a length of 20 cm, with a type N plug right angle to SMA male connector and the type N male to RP SMA male plug adapter coaxial cable connector. The impedance is 50 ohms. What the purpose is of this adapter will be clear later. This is the half wave dipole antenna. As you can see, this is a U-shaped loop. You can use a wire cutter plier to cut the stainless steel wire. Use a water pump plier to create the U-shape. 
and then bend it slightly together. Use a combination plier to bend it 90 degrees. If needed, you can put a washer here. Here are the antenna wire dimensions. From the end of this wire to the center of this wire is 73 millimeters. From the bottom of this wire to the center of this wire, the height is 20 millimeters. The bottom of the wire to the center of the wire is 25 millimeters. And from the end of this wire to the center of this wire is 73 millimeters. The wire diameter is 1.8 millimeter. The wire material is stainless steel. Again, the height is 25 millimeters, and here the height is 20 millimeters. The antenna is attached to the flange using the bolt and a nut. In this example, no washer is needed. The half wave dipole antenna is attached to my test rig. The dipole and the antenna analyzer are connected by a coax cable. In this example, the FISWAR is 1.142. Here, the dipole antenna is connected to the antenna analyzer without using a coax cable. As you can see, the FISWAR is here 1.327. Using a coax cable, the FISWAR is 1.142. Without using a coax cable, the FISWAR is 1.327. It is recommended to connect the antenna directly to the antenna analyzer without using a coax cable. A cable may influence the measurements. In my situation, I got the following results. The FISWAR is approximately 1.3, the impedance is approximately 52 ohms, and the S11 is approximately minus 17 dB. By the way, dipole and antenna analyzer are connected to each other without using a coax cable. Here you see the FISWAR plot, the S11 plot, and the impedance plot. I have modeled the half-wave dipole antenna in the 4NEC2 program. More information about 4NEC2 program, see tutorial 38. The antenna is modeled based on this picture, and I have used these antenna parameters. Initially, the length was set to 0.155 meters in the 4NEC2 program. The calculated FISWAR was 1.67. After using the 4NEC2 optimization functionality, the optimized length was 0.160 meters, and the corresponding FISWAR was 1.43. The 4NEC2 card deck can be found at this location. Initially, the length was set to 0.155 meters. Then I used the 4NEC2 optimizing functionality to improve the design. The optimized length is 0.16 meters. In the 4NEC2 model, the total element length is 160 millimeters. That's this total length. But the real half-wave dipole antenna, the total length is 146 millimeters. That is 2 times 73 millimeters. I used the N1201 SA vector impedance analyzer to tune the antenna. So why this discrepancy? Well, the real antenna is not 100% accurately modeled in the 4NEC2 program. Think of this gap between the elements and this terminal with the screws, and the type N female chassis. All these influences the antenna behavior. In antenna model, when the length is optimized to 0.16 meters, the SWR is 1.43. And here you can find the corresponding vertical radiation pattern 
and the horizontal radiation pattern, the radiation pattern in 3D, and again the vertical radiation pattern. Please be aware that the generated radiation patterns are merely a rough indication how the real dipole antenna behaves. As explained earlier, the real half-wave dipole is not 100% accurately modeled. If you want accurate radiation patterns of real antennas, then the antenna radiation patterns measurements should be performed in an anechoic chamber. By the way, here's the radiation pattern in 3D in colors. The half-wave dipole antenna performance is compared with a sleeve dipole antenna. More information about sleeve dipole antennas, see tutorial 43. For this test, I'm using the end node and antenna C as demonstrated in tutorial 33. More information about this end node, see this tutorial. The end node uses the MCCI LoRaWAN LMIC library, see this GitHub page. And the end node uses the following sketch, see this link. Here the half-wave dipole antenna is connected to the end node using a coax cable. And here the slave dipole antenna is directly connected to the end node. So my end node is placed inside a building, and this is the building circumference. And my end node is placed here in front of a window. There are two end node locations, location A facing east and south, and location B that's this location, facing west and north. In both cases, the end node altitude is approximately 11 meters. I have not modified the end node transmission power when using the half-wave dipole antenna. In my area, there are several gateways, and I know that these gateways, which are connected to the Things network, can receive my transmitted data. The half-wave dipole antenna is attached to an end node at location A and transmitted data, and I have done the same with the sleeve dipole antenna. In both cases, two messages per minute were transmitted. The log data can be found at this location. Here you can see the half-wave dipole antenna results. And here are the sleeve dipole antenna results. These are all the gateways which are able to receive my transmitted data. Please note, this is just a snapshot. When I conduct the same test at a different date and time, I might get different results. I have created a map with gateway ID locations. This map is used for tutorials 41 to 49 which means you can find gateways which are not mentioned in this tutorial. This is my end node location. Here's the half-wave dipole measurements. And you can see this gateway was able to receive my transmitted data. That is gateway 013. Let's go to this map. Gateway 013, that is this gateway. The end node transmission power is 14 dBm. This table is created from data from this file. If you only focus on this gateway, the distance from end device to this gateway is 1.57 kilometers. The altitude of this gateway is 42 meters. From the half-wave dipole antenna measurements, I have calculated the average RSSI value. And here is the average SNR value. I have done the same for the sleeve dipole antenna. I have ignored the results from these gateways because it only contains one or a few measurements. I'm only focusing on this gateway, gateway 013. If you only look at the 013 gateway results, you may notice there is no significant difference in the average RSSI and SNR values. But if you look at the time it took to transmit 15 messages, there is a difference. So if you look at the half-wave dipole antenna, this is the first measurement with this date and time. Then take 15 messages. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So these are total 15 messages, and this is the end time. Do the same for the sleeve dipole antenna. This is the start time. And after 15 messages, take the end time. When using the half wave dipole antenna, it took 18 minutes to transmit 15 messages. When using the sleeve dipole antenna, which is my reference antenna, it took 10 minutes to transmit 15 messages. The Arduino sketch is configured to transmit two messages per minute. In a perfect situation, it should take 7.5 to 8 minutes to transmit these 15 messages. The problem might be caused by the RF coaxial cable with the type N male plug right angle to SMA male connector. I have conducted another test whereby the half wave dipole antenna is directly connected to the end device, as you can see here. No coax cable is used. Again, dipole antenna directly connected to end node. And again, the same tests were conducted using the same half wave dipole antenna and sleeve dipole antenna at location A. Two messages per minute were transmitted, and both log data can be found at this location. As you can see, other gateways were able to receive my transmitted data because the tests were conducted approximately one and a half months later. Here are the test results. I will only focus on these two gateways. The other gateways, I will ignore the results because it only contains one or few measurements. Look at the average RSSR values and the average SNR values. If you only look at the 001 and the F3E gateway results, you may notice there is no significant difference in the average RSSI and SNR values. Also, if you look at the time it took to transmit 15 messages, there is no large difference. When using the half wave dipole antenna, it took 11 and a half minutes to transmit 15 messages. When using the sleeve dipole antenna, it took 12 and a half minutes to transmit 15 messages. The RF coaxial cable with type N male plug right angle to SMA male connector is probably not working correctly. I have replaced it with another setup. I'm using a type N male to RP SMA male plug adapter with a coax cable with RP SMA male to RP SMA female connector. Now it took 9 minutes to transmit 15 messages. So my conclusion is, this cable is definitely not working correctly. I have noticed that the center pin of this connector is sometimes half sticking out. I have used this cable more than 100 times, connecting it to different antennas. I have to repair this cable, but that is a subject for another video. Looking at the results, I can conclude that my self-built half-wave dipole antenna performs the same as the purchase sleeve dipole antenna. The simplest way to build a half-wave dipole antenna is buy a SMA female edge PCB straight mount, as you can see over here, remove these three legs, use a copper wire with a diameter of 1.8 millimeters, bend it in an L shape, solder one antenna element to a leg, and solder the other antenna element to the center pin and use an antenna analyzer to determine the correct length. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. If you have questions, leave your comments below. I'll do my best to answer them.